वेलकम टू द वीडियो ऑन मल्टीपल नाइट्रोसामाइन इंप्यूरिटीज टोटल लिमिट सो एज वी नो अबाउट द नाइट्रोसामाइन इंप्यूरिटीज दीज आर हैविंग द म्यूटाजेनिक एंड कार्सिनोजेनिक पोटेंशियल दीज आर कंसिडर्ड एज अ कोर्ट ऑफ कंसर्न एंड नाइट्रोसामाइन्स आर रिक्वायर्ड टू बी लिमिटेड इन द ड्रग प्रोडक्ट्स Nitrosamine impurities have very stringent limits. So, if the drug product is having or is containing or there is if there is a risk that the drug product contains more than one nitrosamine impurities, at that time, how the limit can be given, or that time how the total limit can be even for the drug product so this is the topic for current video see nitrosamines may be the small type of nitrosamines or these may be having the structure resembling to the api structure so as per their type these are small molecule nitrosamines and the ndsris nitrosamine drug substance related impurities small molecule nitrosamines are ndma ndea nmpa ndipa nipea and some others and ndsris are having the similar structure to the api for example n nitroso desmethyl amitriptyline so this is having the resembling structure to the amitriptyline molecule and n nitroso atenolol having the structure similar to the atenolol and these impurities are api specific type of impurities you can say so amitriptyline product may contain this impurity and atenolol type containing products may contain n nitroso atenolol as ndsri impurity so till now we have seen that the impurities may be small molecule or may be the ndsris now as per the guideline given by usfda that is control on nitrosamine impurities in human drugs guidance for impurity which is released currently in september 24 this guideline has given good understanding to the applicants regarding the handling of total limit for multiple nitrosamines so the nitrosamines may be with small molecular nitrosamines or these may be nitrosamine drug substance related impurities so if the product is containing number of impurities whether it is small molecule or the ndsri so how it should be handled now one thing we have to understand before going to the next slide is that the limits for nitrosamines are stringent and the limits are based on the level or concentration such that which may cause tumor incidence in one out of 1 lakh species so this is the theoretical risk that the ai limit of the nitrosamine may or may not cause tumor in one out of 1 lakh species so this is the theoretical risk that if this impurity is even at such a limit of ai that is acceptable intake limit it may cause tumor in one species out of 1 lakh species and this is considered as a 100% risk so the drug product should contain or so should not contain nitrosamine above the ai limit or in other words the nitrosamine should be below the ai limit 
so that you can say the product is not having 100% risk it is below the <coughs> theoretical risk of 100% now example is ai limit for ndma it is 96 nanogram per day NDA is 26.5 nanogram per day, and N nitroso ethanol limit is 1500 nanogram per day. So these are the limits for individual impurity, and these limits are considered as having 100% risk. So the truck product is required to be maintained in the nitrous amine impurity below these limits so ndma should not cross the limit of 96 nanogram per day nda should not cross the limit of 26 nanogram per day and n nitrous ethanol which is given as 1500 nanogram per day so these are the limits for individual impurities now you got the information about the individual impurities i have given the examples now what if the drug product contains multiple nitrosamine impurities see the need to consider the risk as not more than 100% risk still you have to consider the risk of 100% only this 100% risk it is very important to understand here the risk should not be more than 100% risk whether your product is containing single impurity or whether your product is containing the multiple nitrosamine impurities the theoretical risk of cancer should not be more than 100% and what is the 100% risk that means cancer incidence in one species out of 1 lakh species now the 100% risk may get distributed this is just for our understanding about the topic you should not take is as per these wordings if one impurity is having certain limit and it is having 100% risk now your drug product is containing three impurities or two impurities then the risk will get distributed like 100% risk divided by 3 nitrosamine risk 33.33% risk and then the total will be 100% now as per this basics we will see the flexible approach given by the us fda so as per the flexible approach the flexible approach can be used to control the total nitrosamine level when nitro when multiple nitrosamines may be present in the same drug product to meet the recommended acceptance intake that is ai limit based on the increased cancer risk of 1 in 1 lakh species and suppose the drug is containing three nitrosamine impurities each individual nitrosamine should be calculated as a percentage of its ai limit such that the sum of all the nitrosamines does not exceed 100% if more than 3 nitrosamines are present in the drug product then it is to be communicated to the regulatory authority and the regulatory agency will guide you for further process also the regulatory authority will take it on case by case basis now as per the us fda guideline i have taken this information to make you understand suppose drug a has a maximum limit of 80 mg per day so maximum daily dose is 80 mg and drug product is containing nitrosamine impurity 
one, two, nitrosamine impurity three. So as per these, you can consider it as a small molecule, nitrosamine. This this is uh, uh, NDSRI, and this is also NDSRI. Or you can take vice versa. So these are the AI limits in nanogram per day. Twenty-six point five nanogram per day. Thirty-seven point five nanogram per day. Fifteen hundred nanogram per day. So here there will not be any total AI limit because these are the specific nitrosamine AI limits. Now the total nitrosamine is the sum of the percentage of AI limits for each individual nitrosamine. No more than hundred percent means. The theoretical cancer risk is no more than one in one lakh species. I request you to be very focused onto this slide so that you will understand these things in a better way. Now, you have three impurities in your drug product. You are having their AI limits. Now convert these AI limits into ppm level. So how to convert that ppm level? Ppm is equal to AI in a nanogram per day divided by maximum daily dose. So if you divide this 26.5 by 80, you will get limit of 0.33 ppm. Similarly, 0.46 ppm, and similarly. 18.75 ppm, and sum of all nitrosamines is 100%. So this 100% is the maximum limit. Now, if you come to know that you have analyzed the drug product, and your drug product is containing nitrosamine one at a level of 0.10 ppm. Nitrosamine two at a level of 0.05 ppm, and nitrosamine three at a level of 1 ppm. So convert these into percentage of AI limit. So this was the AI limit in ppm. This is the actual value for the impurity as per. Testing and analysis you got, and now it is making 30.30 percent of this limit. So impurity one is present at 30 percent, impurity two is present at 10.87 percent, and impurity three is present at 5.33 percent. So total is making. Forty-six point five zero percent. So it is passing the test, or it is passing the <coughs> criteria, and criteria for total impurity limit, which may be containing the nitrosamine small molecule type of impurity, or the NDSRIs. Now. You might be confused between this hundred percent and this forty-six point five zero percent. So, if you consider a single impurity, this is your hundred percent. Then this is also a hundred percent. This is also a hundred percent. But out of this limit, only you are getting point one in your drug product. So it is thirty percent of this hundred percent. It is ten percent of this hundred percent, and it is five percent out of this hundred percent. So this is the hundred percent. Point three three is hundred percent. Point four six is hundred percent. One point one eighteen point seven five is hundred percent. Out of that, you are getting these percentage, and if you sum it. It will give you 46.5 percent, so it is below 100 percent. That's why it is passing the test. 
Now, if you load it on stability and you get more impurities, and if it is going beyond 100%, then you can say that it is failing in the total impurity limits. If it is below the 100%, then you can say that it is passing in the it is passing the test or it is passing the criteria. So the main understanding here is that your total limit should not be above 100% because it is the risk more than 1 in 1 lakh species and our actual limits are based on the cancer risk of no more than 1 in 1 lakh species. So this is the information about the flexible approach given by USFDA for the drug products which are containing more than more than one impurity but not more than the three nitrosamine impurities. So I hope this is clear for you and I hope you you have got the good idea about these impurity limits how to calculate the total impurity limits for the multiple nitrosamine impurities. I have made some videos on nitrosamine impurities and at that time I was getting questions uh, from the viewers regarding the total limit or impurity limits for nitrosamines if the drug product is containing the small nitrosamines and NDSRIs. So I think uh, this guideline has given good idea about uh, the impurity calculation and how to deal with the multiple nitrosamine problem in the product. Thank you for watching the video and I hope uh, you will comment and share your questions to me and I will try to answer it. I also hope that this video might be helpful to you. Thank you for watching the video.